All right, today's notes are about sketching angles, coterminal angles, and reference angles, and we're going to focus on radians. So this, let's just cross that off, and uh, we'll write radians next to it. All right, now last video we talked about degrees, and I um, already wrote here that there are two ways of measuring an angle, radians and degrees. All right, and again, today's going to be all about radians. I've already counted in the positive direction. Remember, if I go this way around the circle, that's positive. So I have 90, 180, 270, 360. Now let's talk about what radians are and how they're actually used to measure an angle. It's just another way to break up the circle. And so what we do is, we'll just define this right away. There are 360 degrees in a circle. That's the same thing as saying there are two pi radians in a circle. So this is two pi. So if I go all the way around the circle, instead of saying 360 degrees, I could just say that's two pi radians. Just very similar to how we say there are 12 inches in one foot. It's just another way to measure the angle around a circle. All right, so now, if I go all the way around and that's two pi, and of course starting here is at zero if I don't move at all. And that means then that halfway across should be one pi. All right, and so you don't have to write the one in front. Just like half of 360 is 180, half of two pi is one pi. So just consider this two pi just like a definition. All right, now, well, just like half of 180 is the 90 degrees, half of pi is just half a pi and the way we write that I know it sounds a little funny is pi over 2. Usually the big thing is kind of determining what we're counting by and in our last video again in degrees we said each one of these quadrants is 90 degrees so 90 plus 90 is 180 plus another 90 is 270 and so on. Well we can do the same thing in radians and I'll do a little work over to the side if I go from 0 to pi over 2, this angle is pi over 2 radians. Well, if I add pi over 2, now let me put a 1 there, we don't really need it, plus another 1 pi over 2. So I want to see how far this is. Well, 1 pi plus 1 pi is 2 pi over 2, and the 2's cancel, and that's why this is pi. So I'm counting by pi's over 2's, all right? And radians simply become fractions that you have a pi in the numerator, all right? Now, let's see what this is then. Now, you might be able to figure this out in your head and say, well, pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2 plus one more pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. All right, now, if that seems a little strange, we can do the math over here. Now, let me leave the 2 pi over 2. So I have a common denominator. If I add from here to here, another 1 pi over 2. Just like in degrees, 180 plus 90 gets me to 270. I need to see pi plus pi over 2, which is like 90, gives me what? And so 2 pi plus 1 pi is 3 pi over 2. So this guy here, and that's a little sloppy. Let me rewrite that, is 3 pi over 2. So 3 pi over 2. All right, now if I do this one more time, just to get over here, if I take 3 pi over 2 plus another 1 pi over 2, which is, again, 3 pi over 2 is like 270. 270 plus 90 is 360. Well, what's 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 should give me this 2 pi. Well, 3 pi over 2 plus 1 pi over 2. Again, in fractions, we have a common denominator. We keep the denominator the same, add the numerators. 3 pi plus 1 pi is 4 pi. And 4 over 2 reduces to 2 pi. And we can keep going around and count. So the big, big part of this is 90 and pi over 2 are the same. Pi and 180 are the same, just different units of measure. 270 and 3 pi over 2, 360 and 2 pi. So pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi are the quadrantal separations in radians. Now, uh, I can also go in the negative direction. So if I want to do what I did in the last video, but this way in the negative direction, then I have to be careful going this way, this would be negative pi over 2 counting in this direction is negative. 
Well, this would be negative pi. This would become then negative 3 pi over 2, and this would be negative 2 pi. All right, very similar how we did with um, yesterday's video uh, in degrees. All right, so now here's what we have here. We're, we need a conversion factor between degrees and radians, and so we really have several to choose from. I could say pi over 2 equals 90. I could say pi equals 180. I could say 3 pi over 2 equals 270, or 360 equals 2 pi. All right, the easiest one here that has no fractions in it um, is going to be pi equals 180. All right, I could use 2 pi equals 360, but if I divide by 2, then I get pi equals 180. So that's the easiest conversion factor. So that's what we're going to use down here, converting between degrees and radians. If I want to go from degree to radians, now notice I underline that. That means I want radians in my answer. I'm going to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. All right. If I want to write radian measure in degrees, so I'm just converting, I want to multiply by 180 degrees over pi. And we'll go ahead and practice that right down here. So really from what we said up in the circle I had drawn up there, pi is the same as 180 degrees. Just like we could say 12 inches is the same as a foot. It's a conversion factor. So here I want to convert between degrees and radians. So it's 110 degrees. All right. Now, how many radians is that? Well, I know I want to go to radians, and so sometimes it's confusing which way I multiply, pi over 180 or 180 over pi. So these are kind of like any other units. Pi radians is what I want to have in my answer, so I need that on top. So whatever you're converting to, you want on top. And I want the 180 degrees, I really want these degrees to cancel. And, and so like this degree symbol and this degree symbol will cancel. So I'm left with pi, so I know I'm going to radians. So now really, I'm going to have pi in my answer down here. And I just got to figure out what fraction it is. And so now I'm kind of simply dividing 110 by 180 and reducing that fraction. Well, you can cancel the zeros or divide 10 into both the top and bottom and get 11 pi over 18. And so that's the answer. If you need help and to use your calculator, you can do this. The trick is, I would not type pi in my calculator. I'd just write it in my answer. And I would simply take 110 divided by 180, and I could math frac it. And when I do that, I'm going to get 11 over 18. And I just write 11 over 18, but make sure to put pi in the top. And, and never really put it in my calculator. All right. Um, so now let's convert from radians to degree to degrees, excuse me. All right, so now I have negative pi over 9. Now I'm going to degrees, which tells me my 180 has to be on top. And so 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. And you'll notice here, this is a little more obvious, this pi and this pi will cancel. And what's left? Degrees, which is what I want. All right, so now I'm going to end up with a negative answer. 180 divided by 9 happens to be 20. So that's negative 20 degrees. Now when I'm converting, if my answer started out positive, my answer ends up positive. If I start out negative, my answer ends up negative. Now I'm going to approach this the same as I did the last video. Um, in these problems, I'm going to skip the coterminal part uh, unless I have time. Maybe I can come back to it. More than likely, you'll be uh, doing that in class with your teacher. All right, I'm going to go down here to the sketch the angle theta in standard position and find the reference angle theta. Now, we did this in degrees. I'm just going to remind you the reference angle theta prime uh, is actually the reference angle. Theta prime has conditions. It's always going to be positive, so that's not going to change. And we said that it always is less than 90 degrees. Well, in this case, we're going to deal with it in radians, and so that means it has to be less than pi over 2 because pi over 2 is the same as 90 degrees. So when we write a reference angle answer for radians, which all of these problems are in radians because you can see you have the pi in it, you know you're in degrees if you have the degree symbol. Uh, every single uh, reference angle answer has to be positive and less than pi over 2. All right, so let's get going on as many of these as we can. So this pi over 4 one, I'm going to start here, and I'm going to graph it. All right, now, 
These are a little more difficult than degrees at first. I think you get used to it. Uh, over here is pi. So we know that just from uh, the work I did uh, up top. All right, now, the, the problem here is I need to know where pi over 4 is, right? Well, we know pi over 2 is up here, right? These are ones we know. Well, pi over 4 is a smaller fraction than pi over 2, so it's going to fall in this quadrant. So we need to draw our initial side, and then this is our terminal side. So it's going to open up like that. That's how you draw an angle in standard position. And this is pi over 4. All right, now, again, these are just like fractions. So pi is the same as pi. So if I divide pi by 4, it's going to be smaller than pi over 2. So pi over 4 exists between 0 and pi over 2. Now, what's theta prime? Remember, the reference angle is how far you are, or an angle measure from your terminal side, which is right here, to your nearest x-axis. Well, the nice thing about this is we opened up pi over 4 to get here, so I have to go back, and it would be pi over 4. So sometimes the answer is its own reference angle. Remember, don't go from here to here, because that's not the closest x-axis, and never use a reference angle to the y-axis. All right, 5 pi over 3. All right, now we know this is pi, but here's the trick with this. If I put pi over 2, 5 pi over 3 is really bigger than 1 pi. 1 pi in terms of this denominator right here is kind of important. All right, so uh, in this one, I'm going to create pi as a common denominator with a 3, which means if I put 3 in the bottom, I have to put 3 in the top. So 3 pi over 3 is the same as pi, and now I can easily compare that to 5 pi over 3. And you'll see kind of where I'm going with this in a second. In this problem over here, I took pi and divided by pi over 2. And this I didn't really have to worry about the same as b because pi over 4 is a really small angle. Well, I really need to know what I'm counting by right here. All right. So in this case, I divided by 2. So I'm going to take this and divide it by 2. But a really kind of shortcut way to look at it is just divide this 3 by 2. And so when I divide that by 2, I get 1.5 pi over 3. And I know that seems a little weird, but if I take 1.5 pi over 3 and I add 1.5 pi over 3 to it, I'm right here at 3 pi over 3, which means I'm counting by 1.5 pi over 3, All right, which is just half the numerator. And the, again, the reason why that's important is because i I got to figure out where 5 pi over 3 is, and we're not really used to that. So now if I add another 1.5 to pi, 3 pi, so 1.5 pi to 3 pi is 4.5 pi over 3, which is still not big enough for 5 pi over 3. If I add another 1.5 pi over 3 to that, then I get 6 pi over 3. Now notice if I reduce 6 pi over 3, that's 2 pi, which this spot should be. All I'm really doing is breaking these up into pieces of pi's over 3's. All right, so I can kind of um, get a common denominator. All right, now, where does 5 pi over 3 exist? Between 4.5 and 6. So I'm going to draw this, and the terminal side is somewhere down here. And so that means i got to draw my arrow going this way. And now i got to figure out um, theta prime. So theta prime is equal. Now remember, i got to get, this is, let me write this over here. This is 5 pi over 3. How far is it from 5 pi over 3 to 6 pi over 3? Well, that's just 1 pi over 3. So this is my theta prime. I'm going to circle this one or box it because i got a lot going on here. All right, now I'm going to skip over to D. C, E, and F, your teacher will do with you in class tomorrow. So now, 5 pi over 6. This is going to be pi, but as a common denominator with 6, I need 6 pi over 6. All right. I'm going to divide this top 6 by 2, and that gives me 3 pi over 6, which means I'm counting by 3 pi over 6. So 3 pi over 6 plus another 3 pi over 6 does give me 6 pi over 6. The nice thing is, though, 5 pi over 6 is between 3 and 6. So 5 is between 3 and 6. And so this is my initial side. My terminal side is somewhere over here, and here's that angle. And now, if this angle right here, I already have it written here, is 5 pi over 6, how far is it from 5 pi over 6 to 6 pi over 6, this distance? Well, theta prime is pi over 6, and that's your reference angle. All right, we'll practice more of this tomorrow. All right, see you in class.